right, good morning. <clears throat> so today we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to walk through the exploratory process with a very famous diamond data set. Uh, the first thing I want to do is clean this up. A strong data, a pretty data set is a strong data set. It's one of these little maxims that I've worked with my whole professional career. We don't really need this guy, I don't think. So I'm just turning it over to the to the left, at least not right now. Um, and so I spread these out. And if you're not familiar with diamonds, then you know there be there'll, there'll be one moment in your life where you will be, for most of you. And if not, that's fine too. Um, so we are going to look at the price of diamonds because that's what we care about. I'm going to turn that into a dollar sign. And there are the four C's, the five C's that people really, really care about when it comes to diamonds, right? And they are, uh, matter of fact, yeah, I am going to delete this. I don't really need that. Uh, they are the carrot, right, which is the size, the cut, which is how good of a cut it is, the color of the diamond, how transparent it is, sorry, the color of the diamond, which is like the tone, the clarity of the diamond, which is how clear it is, imperfections, that kind of thing, and depth, I guess, is how tall or how deep it is. Uh, X, Y, Z also then are the sizes of the diamonds, whatever. We're going to focus on these first four. And even then, we'll focus on carrot more than anything else. But today's deal is about storytelling, right? And so we want to tell a story with the data set, something that matters. We want to answer a question. We want to do something important uh, here or whatever. And the first thing we would normally do is go through the exploratory process, right? So I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to insert a couple of rows here so that we can walk through this for, for the sake of practice. Um, for example, if I wanted to calculate the average of all the prices, you know, I would do something like that, and I'd see that the average price is $3,900. Well, that's not very helpful, right? Because you're going to buy diamonds at different sizes, uh, different needs. You might use them for a, you might buy multiple diamonds for a bracelet. So it doesn't really tell a good story about what's going on here. Uh, so, so if I walk through the uh, exploratory list of you know missing data and shaping data, followed by descriptive statistics and then plots and graphs, we would jump over to plots and graphs. And so one of the things I wanna do real quick is do a quick plot and graph here of the size of the diamond or the carats and the prices of the diamond. This would be a nice little uh, scatter plot. Let's see what that looks like. Wow, that looks huge, right? And so that is hard to measure. It's hard to kind of manipulate. Let me see if I can spread it out a little bit for the sake of trying to understand what's happening here. So this is not a true linear regression, obviously, but if I were to do a trend line here, let me change the color so we can see it to like bright orange, right? You would see that there is this relationship where as the size of the stone increases, so does the price, right? And that makes sense. The bigger the diamond, the more expensive it's gonna be. All right, great, but there's some weirdness in here that we can't really, like why is there a wall here at the one carat mark? And that's the storytelling portion that we're gonna get into here in a minute, right? And this is great and this is nice, but there are some tools where Excel really just can't do it. And that's not true. You could do what we're about to do in Excel, uh, but there are some other programs that do it better and easier. And one of the most famous ones is Tableau, which I'm going to introduce to you right about now. And it looks like this. So Tableau is a data visualization program where we can do some fancy stuff. You'll notice that it's the same data set in here. It just looks all super fancy. And most of us will play with it. Um, there, that's better. Okay, now you'll see here on the left-hand side, once I get into building a sheet, that I've got all the variables that I previously had. They're just kind of listed out as variables. And I'm going to start very cleanly, very slowly with the price and the carrots, right? And this is good. There's a little bit of manipulation that has to happen here. 
dimension and dimension. And then we end up with a graph that looks a lot like the one we had a minute ago, right? Now, this is very interesting. You can see a lot more detail here. This visualization process is designed this way. Uh, stones go from $326 up to uh, $18,000. All right, so here we are, and there's a couple of extra things we can do here. So let's talk about the story. The story that we want is to try to get, we're trying to describe what's happening in the data set. We're trying to describe what's going, how that's going to tell us. And there, there are these jumps. You see these vertical lines here? Why are these vertical lines, like what happens between one and the other? And the first big, I mean, there, you could kind of tell there's some other ones in here, but the first big vertical line happens here at the one, right at about, I can't really tell, let's zoom in a little bit. One, one, one. Everything on this row right here is one. What do you think is happening there? Well, that's interesting. Let's go to the next one. The next one's happening right about here. What happens here? 1.2 and here, 1.5 and here. 1.7. There are these blocks where it appears to me, right, that there is a price jump. I bet this is 2.0. Sure enough, if I zoom in, this is 2.0. So if I were to describe these, this line is 1.0, 1.2, 1.5, 1.7, and 2.0. There are these, these, um, whoops. There are these, I don't know how to describe them, these walls, these price points. That's better. There are these price points, or these size points, where the price you know, moves up tremendously. And it's not a true linear regression, right? And you can do with that information what you will. So let's go to the one carat jump right about here somewhere you can it looks to me like there are a bunch of price points down here at 0.97 what's this guy 0.97 that if you were to get a 0.97 rock instead of a 1.0 rock you'd be you might end up in a better price point and so that's the first thing i would look at this and be like wow there's some marketing and some pricing effects happening right here where it looks like they're going to jump you up to the next one but that's not completely true because it comes from the carrot sizing as opposed to the price sizing which tells me that there are a lot of stones cut at 1.0 and there are very few stones cut at 0.99 right the industry turns around and says cut this at 1.0 cut this at 1.2 cut this at 1.7 because that's what we perceive that people want you're not going to find a lot of rocks at 0 0.99 0 0.96 0 0.9 oh i'm going to save money by going to 0.96 maybe maybe not there seem to be a lot of stones at point at 1.0 right so first of all i can tell that there is some supply manipulation happening by diamond suppliers um, and that doesn't really mark in my favor. But Tableau lets us do some very interesting stuff. For example, clarity. I'm going to drop clarity into my color uh, descriptor, and ooh, that tells me something, right? So first of all, you can tell that the lower-priced blue stones in different sizes are identified by one... Uh, can you see that in your deal? I think you can. I'll scoot it over a little bit. I1 up here in the corner, and the pink ones, VVS2, VVS2 are, well, they're right in here, but that doesn't necessarily mean, well, maybe there's just not a lot of them, but these are the higher quality, more transparent, greater clarity diamonds. You'll notice there's not a lot of pinks over here. You're not going to get a stone at 2.0 or greater, that is going to be super, super clear. They end, looks like me, like they end up getting cut in the 1 to 1.5 range, which is probably where the really, really pretty stones are, right? So even if you're super wealthy and you say, oh, I want a VVS2 2 carat stone, they don't exist. They're not there. I think a real sweet spot to me looks like this red SI1 
this mid-range clarity stone here, that's probably where I would be, right? So let's grab one of these red ones, SI1. I'm going to right-click it and drop a trend line, and I'm going to show trend lines. Oh, that's interesting. What do these trend lines tell me? It tells me that the rate of change for price at each of these stones is different, right? That there is... Um, an increase in the price of the stone at greater rates for orange, purple, pink, orange, orange, that's weird, purple, pink, right, than there are for everybody else. That's weird. Why is orange over here? That's something you may want to look at. If IF might be, maybe that's because it's the, the easiest stone to afford, Right, and therefore the all the middle class folk who drop a couple of thousand bucks on something, you know, are willing to spend this extra money because it's the first level thereof. I have no idea, right? I would want if I was buying a bigger stone, I'd probably aim for green, yellow, red, because the rate of change, the rate of increase, seems to be lower than right. Like what is this blue SI two? If I was buying a big stone, I would buy SI two. Right, I1 is probably a little not clear at all. SI2 is middle of the pack. That's going to make it somewhat clear. But the rate of change for the bigger stones as the carrot increases is lower. And you get a higher value product. Certainly higher than red, which is weird. You would think that this one would be steeper than that one. Yeah, I would buy SI2. I'd probably, if I was buying a big stone, I'd buy right in here somewhere which would put you at $10,000. <laughs> okay, well, that's a different conversation, right? Most of us are going to buy over here somewhere in the 1,000, 2,000 range, right? Which is completely different than the getting into the lab diamond argument. But you see the point here. There is a story to be told, and you've got to dive into it to try to figure some of that out. Let's get deep in the weeds here into a price point where we might be able to... Sorry, I'm trying to shift this over. Right, somewhere in the 1,000, 2,000 range is where most of us are going to buy our first diamond in here somewhere. 1.0 in here, which really forces you to a low quality stone, and that's problematic. So if you're looking to spend a thousand, two thousand dollars on your first, your first, hopefully your only, but your first diamond engagement ring, you're going to end up in the $2,000 range with a very, very cheap stone, right? Or you're going to have to go smaller to get a good stone and so on. And here is the story. The story is you have to decide what your value, your price to value looks like so that you can turn around and make a good recommendation on how much money you're willing to spend on what kind of quality of stone, right? And you can take this further. You can turn around and say, you know what? Let's identify color. And here I'm not going to go to, I'm not going to, the color of the stone. I'm going to put the shape on this one. And oh man, the colors of the stone are all over the place. I don't know which color is, you know what? I can. Hold on a second. Here is the colors, right? D and F are colorless. That's going to make them more expensive. And S through Z, which we don't have on our list, we'll go up to I, J. So just these guys, colorless or nearly colorless, uh, are going to be less expensive, right? We want, most people want the colorless stones up at the top. So the D's and the F's. So we want circles and squares. Circles and squares, circles and squares. Well, you know what? If I want circles and squares, that's not going to do it for me. Can we turn this into a filter somehow? Let's drop this into a filter. So we're going to get the claret, sorry, the color and drop it into a filter. There we go. And I only want the top two stones. And that makes a lot of them disappear. Right? So now you're digging into a place where, you know what? You're probably not going to get a good blue cheap stone. Uh, Certainly not in these sizes. They're all at 1.0. Look at this concentration here in the blues, right? If you're going to buy your future wife a one carat diamond, she's going to want it to be colorless or nearly colorless. The industry then cuts those in this range here. You see very, very few blue cheap diamonds down here. Yeah, so you're paying about three grand. Most of you are going to pay three, three to four thousand dollars for the ring, and that's the story.
right? The story is the industry knows what it is that she wants, particularly when it comes to engagement rings, obviously, and cuts diamonds to that fit, which pushes up these price points to the $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 range. And if you want something smaller, you're going to get something of lower quality. This is the sweet spot for the market right here. Um, although red looks really nice at that lower, at that low mid cut. This is probably the sweet spot in here, three to 5,000 for the industry. You have these other concentrations, uh, but you end up with stones that are a little smaller than the one carat that uh, make it competitive, socially competitive for women to compare against each other, right? So this is probably appropriate. I'll tell you, I did not buy my wife a one carat stone. Uh, I did look at a data set that looks similar to this and we made decisions based off of the quality of the stone as opposed to the size of the stone. Uh, but looking back, you know what? I'm not going to comment. You guys figure out what it is that you think you want. Play with this data set. Have fun with it. Just kind of look to see where you are and where you're. If you already have a diamond or two or if your parents have one, take a look at them and see if they compare uh, with what you think is out there in the market, right? The point here is that we have to dig through the data to tell a story, uh, to answer the questions of interest. What is this data set trying to tell me? Uh, what is it that I need to know? What is it? How do I keep myself from being manipulated by, in this case, these diamond cutters? Uh, and sometimes you surprise yourself with the decisions that you make once you have access to and process this kind of data. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you have fun with this. Grab the data, play with it, see how you can manipulate it. Uh, it's a great way to practice Tableau and uh, enjoy.